Good morning, brothers, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello. Go ahead and get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to the book of Judges. The book of Judges. And turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Judges chapter 13. I'm going to be doing some looking into Samson today, okay, for our instruction in righteousness, okay. Um, turn to Judges chapter 13. <clears throat> we are going to be reading verses 1 on the verse Fifth, uh, one under verse five. Follow me along, of course. <clears throat> Judges chapter 13, verses one under verse five. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines 40 years. And there was a certain man of Zorah, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. <coughs> and the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman, beg pardon, and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Philistines. And of course, talking about Samson. Very quickly, looking at verse 5, For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. Nazarite. What is a Nazarite? Okay? This is for those of you of the Church of the Living God who do not know this. Okay? Go to Numbers chapter 6. Numbers chapter 6. What is a Nazarite? Numbers chapter 6. Numbers chapter 6, verses 1 under verse 12. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When either man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow of a Nazarite, to separate themselves unto the Lord. Separation. Being other than. Different than. Separate. Okay? Separation. Separation is the key to understanding what a Nazarite is. Okay? Let's continue. He shall separate himself from wine and strong drink, and shall drink no vinegar of wine or vinegar of strong drink. Neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes, nor eat moist grapes or dried. All the days of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head, until the days be fulfilled in the which he separateth himself unto the Lord. He shall be holy, separate, set apart, different, other than, okay? He shall be holy, and shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow. All the days that he separated himself unto the Lord, he shall come at no dead body. He shall not make himself unclean for his father, or for his mother, or or for his mother, for his brother, or for his sister when they die, because the consecration of his God is upon his head. 
All the days of his separation, he is holy unto the Lord. Now, very quickly, we have to address the dispensational difference. Okay? This is under the dispensation of law, which was faith and works. Eternal security was not in the Old Testament times under the law. Okay? They were not sealed with the Holy Ghost. Okay? The Holy Ghost could come and go, come and go, come and go within the Old Testament because the circumcision made without hands wasn't there. Okay? Very important to note that because today, in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, when you are saved, born again, you know, converted, God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord is that Spirit, seals you with the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit, okay? So because we have God the Father dwelling within us, okay, we are separate in that alone that we have God living within us, okay? The dispensational difference here, clearly to be noted, okay? Clearly to be noted. But hence again, separation. Separation. Don't forget that. Okay, let's continue. Verse 9. And if any man die very suddenly by him, and he hath defiled the head of his consecration, then he shall shave his head in the day of his cleansing. On the seventh day shall he shave it. And on the eighth day he shall bring two turtles, or two young pigeons, to the priest, to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall offer the one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering and make an atonement for him for that he sinned by the dead and shall hollow his head that same day. And he shall consecrate unto the Lord the days of his separation and shall bring a lamb of the first year for a trespass offering. But the days that were before shall be lost because his separation was defiled. Because his separation was defiled. Okay? Hence, that's what a Nazarite was. Okay? It means separate. Separating himself. Or what does it say there in verse 1? When either man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow of a Nazarite. Separating themselves. Being set apart. Okay? Now, go, and now also too, while talking about the separation thing, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. You know the verses we're going to look at. You ought to know. If not, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Verses 14 on to verse 18. Okay? Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. You're saved, born again, converted. God dwells within you. Okay, you get that, right? Whereas in the dispensation under the law, pertaining unto the Nazarite, okay, what we just looked at too, who is separate, okay, but under the dispensation of the law. There's no eternal security. The Holy Ghost can come and go, come and go, come and go. Okay? Keep that in mind. <clears throat> Verse 16 again. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. Okay? Talking about separation. Okay? Now, 
Go back to Judges. Go back to Judges chapter 14 now. So we saw that Samson was to be a Nazarite. And our Lord used Samson to judge Israel. Okay? Judges chapter 14. Verses 1 on to verse 4. Judges 14, verses 1 on to verse 4. Okay? Now, Samson was a Nazarite unto, from his birth, separated unto God. Okay? Judges chapter 14, verses 1 on to verse 4. And Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Israel's enemy. And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me to wife. He saw a woman of the Philistines. Hmm. I'm going to address that here in a little bit. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of Thy brethren, or among all my people, that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleaseth me well. She pleaseth me well. Remember that. Remember that. But his father and now check this out. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord that he sought an occasion against the Philistines. For at that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Look at that verse, verse 4. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord that he sought an occasion against the Philistines. For at that time, the Philistines had dominion over Israel. <clears throat> and then, when you, if you were to continue reading Judges 14, you see, number one in verse, what is that? Verse 6, okay? Look at verse 6. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid, and he had nothing in his hand, but he told not his father or his mother what he had done. Him renting a, a lion, killing a lion with his bare hands, okay? But note, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, in verse 6, and also in verse 19. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he went down to Eshbelon, and slew thirty men of them, and took their spoil, and gave change of garments unto them, which expounded the riddle. And his anger was kindled, and he went up to his father's house. Look at this, verse 20. But Samson's wife was given to his companion, whom he had used as his friend. So this woman, this daughter of the Philistines, who was Samson's wife, was given on to his friend to seek an occasion against the Philistines. Verse 4, but his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord. The Lord allowed this to happen so that he could have occasion against the Philistines, okay? Keep that in mind. Now look at Judges chapter 15. Remember too, in verse 3 of Judges 14, okay, where he says, And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleaseth me well. Mm. With his eyes saw this woman of the Philistines, this daughter of the Philistines. Judges chapter 15, verses 14, on to verse 20. Okay? <clears throat> And when he came to Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the cords that were upon his arms became as flax, 
that was burnt with fire, and in his bands loosed from off his hands. And he found a new jawbone of an ass, and put forth his hand, and took it, and slew a thousand men therewith. And Samson said, with the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of an ass have I slain a thousand men. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand and called that place Ramath Lehi. And he was sore thirst and called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant. Okay? Thy servant. And now shall I die for thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised? But God clave on hollow place that was in the jaw. And there came water thereout. And when he had drunk, his spirit came and he revived. Wherefore he called the name thereof en which is in Lehi unto this day. And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines 20 years. So Samson was a judge in Israel for 20 years. He was used mightily of the Lord, right? The Spirit of the Lord came upon him, okay? And when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, okay, he slew a thousand men with the jawbone of an ass, okay? And reading, and before all that, his own people, 3,000 men, came up and said, we're going to deliver you to the Philistines. And he's like, hey, don't you kill me. But go ahead. And they said, we're not going to kill you, but we're going to uh, deliver you over onto the Philistines. And hence what, ha what happened, okay? So the Lord used Samson. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay? He did. But now... Let's go to Judges chapter 16. Okay? Remember where it says in Judges 14? Verse 3, And his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren, or among all my people, that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleaseth me well. Now the Lord used this occasion, absolutely, as he did with the um, slain of a thousand men with the jawbone of an ass. Okay, yes he did. Yes he did. Sam, uh, Judges chapter 16 now. Then went Samson to Gaza, and saw there an harlot, and went in unto her. Hmm. You saw an harlot, for she pleaseth me well. Earlier, in Judges chapter 14. And it was told the Gazites, saying, Samson is come hither. And they compassed him in, and lay wait for him all night in the gate of the city, and were quiet all the night, saying, In the morning, when it is day, we shall kill him. And Samson lay till midnight, and arose at midnight, and took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts, and went away with them, bar and all, and put them upon his shoulders, and carried them up to the top of an hill that is before Hebron. So, okay, he sees a harlot. He goes in onto the harlot and lays with her till midnight. The guys are, are going to come and get him. He wakes up at midnight. It's like, ah, no big problem. And what does he do? And took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and went away with them. Bar and all, and put them upon his shoulders, and carried them up to the top of an hill that is before Hebron. Okay? Did that very almost notch lockly. Took these things, put them upon his shoulders, and ah, right? But note, he saw an harlot. He was laying with an harlot. Hmm. Should someone who is separated unto the Lord have done such a thing? Now, we saw the uh, thing for a Nazarite there in Numbers chapter 6. 
didn't mention anything about uh, laying with harlots, did it? Uh, but it should be obvious because of the totality of the law of Moses, okay? <laughs> uh, wasn't it Solomon who loved many strange women? And what did those strange women cause Solomon to do? You read that in uh, 1 Kings chapter 11 on your own time, okay? Let's continue this. <clears throat> now, we saw the harlot in verse 1, okay? Look at this. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, who, whose name was Delilah. Ooh. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him. And we will give thee, Eve, every one of us, eleven hundred pieces of silver. Entice him. Entice your husband. Where his great strength lieth. Okay? Hold your place here. Go to Proverbs chapter 6. Today is the 6th. Did you read the 6th proverb today? Hmm? I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Of course. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 6 on to verse 26. <clears throat> Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou uh, arise out of thy sleep? Oh, maybe say at midnight? When lying with a harlot? Hmm. Not being separate? Hmm. What are you mingling yourself with? You can go that around in your own head for a little bit, huh? Let's continue. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that prevaileth, and thy want as an armed man. Let's continue this. A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a froward mouth. He winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, he teacheth with his fingers. Frowardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. These six things doth the Lord hate. Six. What is six, the number six attributed to? The number of a man. Man. The number of man. Six? Hmm. Let's continue. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are abomination unto him. What's first mentioned? A proud look. Look at you. You Christian. Look at you. Proud look. A lying tongue. Search the scriptures. What our Lord thinks about liars. <clears throat> and hands that shed innocent blood. And heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift to running to mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies. And he that soweth discord 
among brethren. My son, keep thy father's commandment, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thine heart, and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Why are they the way of life? To keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids, with her eyelids. Um, men, have you seen online looking for things, doing some inf uh, info searching or whatever it is you're doing, and there may be a picture of a woman where it's just on her eyes, like in these pop-up ads or whatever they are, Sometimes the eyes of a woman can be very seductive, right? Look at that. Okay? Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, the outward adornment. I have seen some women out there who are just absolutely beautiful with your to see with your eyes, right? Start talking to them. They reek of dung on the inside, right? Neither let her take thee with her eyelids. Hmm? Using her eyes. Hmm? Look at this. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Uh, precious life, excuse me. Look at that, verse 26. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. Brought to a piece of bread. What does that mean? You know, I have a dog named Zena, and I'll get a goodie in my hand. It's like, come here, Zena, come here, come here, little Zena, get the goodie, get the goodie. The principle, by means of a horish woman, so a woman who uses her outward adornment, her beauty, and her eyelids, okay? Look at that, verse 24, to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery, flattering you. From the flattery of the tongue of the strange woman, lust not after her beauty in thine heart, her beauty, her outside appearance, neither let her take thee with her eyes, with her eyelids, excuse me, with her eyelids, using her eyes all seductively. So flattery, outward adornment, and looking her in the eyes. Okay? For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. A horse woman who has a piece of bread calling the man as if he were a dog because she used flattery, her outward beauty, and her eyelids. And hence, he is brought to her as a dog being called to a piece of bread. Do you see that? Hmm? Do you see that? Go back now to Judges. Judges chapter uh, 16, picking up at verse 6. Now, while we're reading this, pay close attention to the conversation that is happening between Samson and Delilah. Pay close attention to this, okay? And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. Okay? And Samson said unto her, If they bind me with seven green widths that were never dried, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Is that true? Let's find out. Then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven green widths, which had not been dried, and she bound him with them. 
Now there were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber. And she said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he brake the wits, as a thread of tow is broken when it toucheth the fire. So his strength was not known. <laughs> now, look at verse 10. And Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me, and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith, tell me, uh, tell me I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound. Hold on, hold on, okay? Remember what we just looked at in Proverbs, okay? By means of a whorish woman using flattery, outward adornment, and the eyelids, okay? One could logically reckon, knowing the track record of Samson, that this Delilah was probably a very good-looking woman. Probably. Also, it can be reasonably deduced that Delilah probably dressed as a harlot. Can't really prove that, but you can guesstimate that hmm, probably. Okay? Okay? Verse 6. Tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thy great strength lieth. Then Samson lied to her. He did. He knew all along where his great strength lieth, but he said that to Delilah. Why to kind of throw her off? Was Samson privy to what was going on? Maybe. I personally believe that Samson was probably not the sharpest knife in the drawer, you know, the brightest bulb in the box, okay? I personally believe that Samson was, um, was a little... Stupid. <laughs> just a little bit. That's just me. That's just me. Now let's continue, okay? From verse 11. She's using seduction. Okay? Note this. Delilah is using manipulation tactics on her husband, Samson. Okay? Hmm. <clears throat> Let's continue at verse 11. And he said unto her, If they bind me fast with new ropes that never were occupied, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith, and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars in wait abiding in the chamber, and he brake them from off his arms like a thread. And Delilah said unto Samson, Hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web. Put it in a bun or something, okay? Now, look at how she's doing this, okay? She's asking, how can I bind you? How can I weaken you? And Samson is leading her off into these things. It's like a, a chess game right there. Okay, Delilah is being manipulative, trying to get this information out of Samson. Samson is, I believe, a little bit more privy to it. Okay, he is. So he's giving her these little things. It's a chess game of manipulation. Okay, let's continue. In verse 14. And she fastened it with the pin and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awaked out of his sleep. And went away with the pin of the beam and with the and with the web. Now look at this. Look at this. And she said unto him, How canst thou say I love thee? When thine heart is not with me. Talk about some manipulation right there, boy, huh? Look at that. Let's read. Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. And it came to pass, when she pressed him daily with her words, and urged him 
so that his soul was vexed unto death. It's better to live in the corner of the of a housetop with uh, than with a contentious and brawling woman. Okay, a contentious and brawling woman. Okay, using flattery, her outward adornment, her beauty, and her eyelids. <clears throat> Hi, and verse 15, and she said unto him, How canest thou say I, I love thee when thine heart is not with me? And look at verse 16, And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed on to death. Let's go back to Proverbs. Got to see this. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. And oh, that's all, Brad. Thank you, pardon, brethren. Proverbs 6, verse 26. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. Here, buddy. Here, buddy. Oh, how sayest thou thou lovest me? Come here, come here. For by means of a horse woman is a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Go back to Judges. Let's read verse 16 again. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed on to death. <laughs> that he told her all his heart. See, she used flattery. Her body, the way she looked, her eyelids, her words, fair words and speeches. Okay? That he told her all his heart and said unto her, now here's the truth. There hath not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he has shewed me all his heart. This is it. Told me the truth. Then the lords of the Philistines came up onto her and brought money in their hand. For the love of money is the root of all evil, for which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Look at verse 19. And she made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man. And she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him. And his strength went from him. She began to afflict him. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. See? Watch this. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. Pay attention. And he awoke out of his sleep <sighs> and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. <sighs> no big deal. I told her all this spiel before and went out there and blah, you know, big deal. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza 
and bound him with fetters of brass, and he did gird in the prison, and he did grind, excuse me, grind in the prison house. Howbeit, the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. Look at verse 20. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out at, as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. So you see, Samson messed around quite a bit, didn't he? Look at it. Okay, look at the life of Samson. He messed around with Harlot, Delilah, okay? Because she pleaseth me well, okay? He gave himself over to women, okay? He was used mightily of God. Yes, he was. He judged Israel. Look at uh, Judges 15, verse 20. And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines 20 years. Let's see. He played around a little bit. He took for granted his calling, what the Lord had called him on to do. He messed around. He played around with it. And then, along comes Delilah, who, like I said, was probably a very good-looking woman, dressed not, mo uh, not um, modestly, using her eyelids, using manipulation on him. That whole um, exchange between Samson and Delilah, using manipulation on him. And he's like, ah. Until finally his soul was so vexed and on to death that he let down his defenses and was vulnerable with a woman whom he should not have been with. And what happened? Put out his eyes. Shaved, shaved his head. Put out his eyes. And he said, like, I'm going to go out there just as before. It's like, no big deal. Verse 20. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. What's the point, Brad? Samson took advantage and lightly esteemed his calling and became all too familiar with our Lord. Like he's, he's, the old, he's our old buddy, right? It doesn't matter what I'm going to do. Look at what I've done so far. He'll deliver me. But he gave himself over unto women. Harlot, here in chapter 16, Delilah, Daughters of the Philistines. Okay? Now granted, the Lord used Samson mightily. Let's see. He messed around. He played around. He took advantage of his calling. And it cost him dearly. It cost him his eyes. Didn't it? Go to Numbers chapter 25. Numbers chapter 25. A brother of mine, Brother Alexander Hartley, brought this up to me. And I had called him to ask if I could use this, because the Lord showed this to him right here. Numbers chapter 25, verses 1 and 2. Okay? And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. Moab, the lineage of Lot. Okay? Lot. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. And the people did eat and bow down to their gods. Nowadays, when you look out there, right? Isn't this overtly sexualized thing going on in media with the ladies, excuse me, with the women, right? 
And hey, for you women out there, it's 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 also with the men well as well, right? Mm -hmm. And brought them onto the sacrifice of their gods. Onto the sacrifice of their gods. Hmm. Hmm. Very interesting. Go to Second Chronicles. Go to Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter twenty six. Second Chronicles chapter twenty six. <clears throat> Then all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was sixteen years old, and made him king in the room of his father Amaziah. He built Elul and restored it to Judah. After that, the king slept with his fathers. Sixteen years old was Uzziah when he began to reign, and he reigned fifty and two years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Chekoliah of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah did. He did right by the Lord, yes. As did Samson, didn't he? Okay. And he sought the and he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord. God made him to prosper. Oh, look at that verse. Don't look at me, look at the verse. Oh, and he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. And he went forth and warred against the Philistines, and break down the wall of Gath, and the wall of Jebna, Jebna, and the wall of Eshtad, and built cities about Eshtad, and among the Philistines. And God helped him against the Philistines, and against the Arabians, that dwelt in Gerbal, and the Mehumans, and the Ammonites, gave gifts to Uzziah, and his name spread abroad even to the entering in of Egypt, for he strengthened himself exceedingly. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate, and at the valley gate, and at the turning of the wall, and fortified them. Also he built towers in the desert, and digged many wells, for he had much cattle, both in the low country and in the plains, husbandmen also, and vine dressers in the mountains, and in Carmel, for he loved husbandry. Moreover, Uzziah had an host of fighting men that were out to war by bands, according by the number of their count, by the hand of Jael, the scribe, and Maaziah, the ruler, under the hand of Hananiah, one of the king's captains. The whole number of the chief of the fathers of the mighty men of valor were two thousand and six hundred, and under their hand was an army. Three hundred thousand and seven thousand and five hundred that made war with mighty power to help the king against the enemy. And Uzziah prepared for them throughout all the host shields and spears and helmets and habergeons and bows and slings to cast stones. And he made in Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men, to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks, to shoot arrows and great stones withal. And his name spread far abroad, for he was marvelously helped, till he was strong. Marvelously helped, till he was strong. Uh, question. What we looked at, uh, Samson, wasn't he marvelously helped? Hmm? Hmm? He got a little, uh, got a little pride going on in, in him, didn't he? Samson did? Look at his responses to Delilah again that we already looked at. Hmm? Until Delilah vexed him to the point of death, right? Right? 
and he wist not that the Lord had departed from him. And right here, in the example of Uzziah, he was, okay, look at verse 5. And he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. And looking at verse 15. And he made in Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks, to shoot arrows and great stones withal. And his name spread far abroad, for he was marvelously helped till he was strong. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he transgressed against the Lord his God, and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar. Let's keep reading. And Azariah the priest went in after him, and with him fourscore priests of the Lord that were valiant men. And they withstood Uzziah the king. And said unto him, It appertaineth not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense unto the Lord, but to the priests, the sons of Aaron, that are consecrated to burn incense. Go out to the sanctuary, for thou hast trespassed. Neither shall it be for thine honor from the Lord God. He was marvelously helped until he was strong. Then he got so strong, full of himself, he took it upon himself to do something that was not pertaining on to him, as we just saw. He thought very highly of himself. It's like, I don't need these priests. I don't need anything uh, to, of the priest to do, to offer incense, incense unto the Lord. Look at how he has blessed me. Look at how what he has done for me. There's no end of what he will do for me, right? Right? Look at how Samson messed around. How did it cost him? Look at how Uzziah messed around. Let's see how it costed him. <clears throat> then Uzziah was wroth. Who are you guys to say this to me? Look at how the Lord has blessed me. Look at me. Look at me. I can do anything. <laughs> and yes, I can do all things. Through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Yes. Yes. Yes, you can. But see, you start getting a little too full of yourself. Start taking things for granted. Ah, you see. Then Uzziah was wroth and had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was wroth with the priests, Leprosy even rose up in his forehead before the priests in the house of the Lord from beside the incense altar. Oh boy. And Azariah the chief priest and all the priests looked upon him and behold, he was leprous in his forehead and they thrust him out from thence. Yea, himself hasted also to go out because the Lord had smitten him. You talk about an oopsie, right? Leprosy came up in his forehead. The priest was like, that. Oh, get out of here. And Uzziah was like, oh, oh, oh. got to get out of there. Because he got too full of himself. He took for granted the things that the Lord had done for him. And started thinking a little bit more highly of himself than he ought to think. Oh, yeah, brethren. Sisters, yeah. We're kicking some pride today. Hi. Let's continue. <clears throat> and Uzziah the king was a leper unto the day of his death, and dwelt in a several house, being a leper. For he was cut off from the house of the Lord, and Jotham his son was was, and Jotham his son was over the king's house, judging the people of the land. Now the rest of the acts of Uzziah, first and last. Did Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amaz, write? Oh, beg your pardon. So Uzziah slept with his fathers, 
And they buried him with his fathers in the field of the burial which belongeth to the kings. For they said, He is a leper, and Jotham his son reign in his stead. He was marvelously helped till he was strong. Samson was strong all along, right? But there's only so far. When the Lord has called you into something or has given you something, you take advantage of it. You take for granted the things that the Lord has given you. And you start getting full of yourself. Start thinking you are some great one. Um, I remember a specific individual. None of you on YouTube, so chill. Uh, a specific individual who I love very dearly once said to me, I sometimes feel like the Apostle Paul for all the people I've led to the Lord. Oh. Oh. Really? Really? Yeah, yeah. Somebody actually, <laughs> someone very near and dear to me, who I love dearly, had said that to me. Not any of you, my brethren, uh, but someone very near and dear to me said that to me. What? You like the apostle? Oh, really? Oh. People have asked of me, it's like, well, Brad, how many people have you led to the Lord? Uh, I have no idea. I have no idea. I have no idea how one of these videos has cut someone to the heart. I mean, there are brethren out there who have emailed me, yes, and stuff like that. And yes, I have been used to the Lord while I had somebody in front of me uh, uh, prophesying, you know, speaking the word of the Lord, the scriptures onto them. Okay, for us today in this dispensation, yes, I have seen that. I have been used of the Lord of all people in those situations, yes. But people like, well, how many people have you saved? How many, how many people have I saved? What, you crazy man? I don't know. We'll know at the judgment seat of Christ, won't we? Won't we? Won't we? Go to Luke. Go to Luke. Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. You know, I, one of the things I do struggle with more with is pride. I struggle with pride. And praise the Lord. You know what happens to me when I start getting a little too big for my britches? The Lord swiftly whoo, takes my feet right off from under me, boy. <laughs> Without exception. And nowadays, especially to what he's called me onto, it happens now, quickly. Okay? Gotta be very cautious. Pride. Very cautious. Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. We will be reading verses 13 on to verse 21. I love I love this book. <laughs> Luke chapter 12, verses 13 on to verse 21. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Naked came I uh, out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return hither. The Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Kind of paraphrase that a little bit, beg your pardon, that's in the book of Job. You go find that. Okay? And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? 
because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. Oh, I feel like the Apostle Paul for all the people I've led to the Lord. If per chance you are watching this video to whom I'm referring to, please email me. It's not any of you guys here on YouTube, so chill. Let's continue. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. He said, and he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul. Thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? Well, you got a good nest set up for yourself, and you're just going to kick back, put your feet up. Let's read that again, verse 19. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool. Fool has said in his heart, There is no God. This night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. The place here. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 6. Again, today's the 6th. Did you, did you happen to read Ecclesiastes chapter 6 today too? What about Song of Solomon? Cha Song of Solomon, excuse me. Chapter 6. Hmm? Did you read that too? Don't have time to read the word. Shut up. Shut up. Don't have time to spend in the scriptures. Shut up. Too lazy, is that what it is, huh? Ecclesiastes chapter 6 mm -hmm. <clears throat> verses 1 under verse 5 There is an evil which I have seen under the sun under the sun, S-U-N and it is common among men a man to whom God hath given riches, wealth and honor so that he wanteth nothing for his soul of all that he desireth. Yet God giveth him not power to eat thereof, but a stranger eateth it. This is vanity, and it is an evil disease. If a man beget an hundred children, and live many years, so that the days of his years be many, and his soul be not filled with good, and also that he have no burial, I say that an untimely birth is better than he, for he cometh in with vanity, and departeth in darkness, and his name shall be covered with darkness. Moreover, he hath not seen the sun, nor known anything. This hath more rest than the other. Okay? Now, go to Luke 18. Luke 18. Luke 18. We will be reading verses 10 on to verse 43 in Luke 18. Go there, of course. Luke 18, verses 10 on to verse 43. Are you there? 
two men went up into a, into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes onto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Who are you? This man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. And they brought unto him also infants, that he would touch them. But when his disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called unto, them, unto him and said, but Jesus called unto him and said, Suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. Hold your place there and go to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10, <clears throat> verses 13 on to verse 16. And they brought young children to him, that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased, and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. Now, think about this. When he says, uh, back in uh, Luke chapter 18 here, where he says in verse 16, or in verse 17 in Luke chapter 18, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. He's not talking about, you know, being goo-goo or a little babe or anything like that. No. Because we are to grow in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, right? We're not to, supposed to stay spiritual babes all our lives, right? Right? We get that. Out of that, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, <clears throat> verses 9 under verse 13. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. There is, by the way, there is no place in the scriptures that say specifically age of accountability. Okay? There is no place that you are going to find in the scriptures that specifically says age of accountability. For even child is known by his own doings, right? We say that the closest thing that one could arguably come away with the age of accountability thing. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. In Jewish tradition, there is what is called a bat mitzvah and bar mitzvah. One for the, the girls bat mitzvah and one for the boys. Bar mitzvah. Bat or bar. Yeah, bar mitzvah. That is when in Jewish tradition, a Jewish boy becomes a man 
and a Jewish girl becomes a woman. Okay, they have the bat mitzvah and the bar mitzvah. Okay, granted, that's Jewish tradition. Okay, but when I was a child, I speak as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity, self-sacrifice. Charity is self-sacrifice. It's not love. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it's not love. You can love all the wrong things. Charity is self-sacrifice, okay? So here, and go back to Luke 18. So when he's talking about as a child, it doesn't mean goo-goo, little baby, no. You parents, you fathers, you mothers, your kids, your two sons, right? Are they not dependent on daddy and mommy for everything? Hmm? Hmm? We're not supposed to stay as babes. We're supposed to grow in our faith through the scriptures. Okay? We are to study to show ourselves approved unto God. That we be workmen who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? We are to study the scriptures. We are not to stay spiritual babes. We're supposed to go on from milk to strong meat. So when he says, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God, spiritual, as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. Total utter dependence on the Lord. Total, utter dependence on the Lord. That's what that's talking about. Okay? We are born again. Okay? We are his bones and his flesh. God dwelleth within us. Okay? We are to be dependent entirely on the Lord. He says, go there, Go do it. He says, do this, do that. Don't touch that, don't touch that. We are to be dependent upon him for everything. And we are to put our legs into our prayers, not just sit there, you know, sit there taking your ease and waiting for things to fall from heaven upon you. No, 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 no. No. To have a childlike dependence on our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what that means. That's what that means. You and I, Church of the Living God, we are utterly dependent on our Lord for everything. We can't eat, wake, talk, sleep, do anything unless the Lord allows it. Okay? And we can go astray in several things, can't we? Yeah, can't we, right? But yet the Lord will allow that. Why? For our correction, because reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Okay? But the point is, we are to be utterly, totally dependent upon the Lord for everything. And look at Samson. Look at Samson. Look at Uzziah, which we just looked at. They were dependent on the Lord, absolutely. But what happened? They got a little too full of themselves. And they became self-sufficient. Especially King Uzziah. He became self-sufficient. He's like, I don't need the priest. I'm going to go do this. Samson, he, was, he gave himself over to women. Okay? Okay? Took for granted what the Lord had given him. And it cost both of them dearly. You see what I'm saying? Do you see? We have to guard ourselves against such, dear brethren. Because what will it cost you? See, and you got these guys out there, it's like, well, it's not going to cost you your salvation. Uh, if you're truly saved, of course it's not. But um, what happens when you take for granted 
the things that the Lord has given you. Hmm? And you sit there, start preaching things of the Lord, and away from where you are preaching, you are living worse than a devil. Huh? Beware, brethren. Beware. Beware of becoming familiar. Beware of taking for granted those things that the Lord gave you. Don't you ever allow yourself to get puffed up in those things, man. Do that. Because what did we already look at? What was one uh, out of the six things, six synonymous with man, okay? What was the very first things of the six things that the Lord doth hate? A proud look. Let's continue in Luke chapter 18. From verse 18. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And now I've, I've expounded on this before. I'm going to do it again. Okay. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one, that is God. See, this uh, ruler came up to him and said, Good master, he only saw the flesh. You know, he only saw a man there. He didn't know, he didn't have it in his head, like, oh, this is God the Father, okay? This is our promised Messiah, okay? He only saw, he only saw the man, okay? That's all he saw. He didn't realize that the son of David, the king, was right there. Because he was only looking at what it would advantage him like this. Let's read. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not kill. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing. Sell all that thou hast. And distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. Get rid of all your worldly possessions, is what he's saying. Get rid of all these things that you are putting before me. Okay? Verse 23, And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? For it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they that heard it said, Who then can be saved if the rich can't be, right? And he said, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Then Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. And he said unto them, Verily, I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house, or parents, or brethren, or wife, or children for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time, okay, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Present time, because the king was there, okay, Give up all because he was the king. We've got to remember, this is before the crucifixion. Still under the law. He was offering the kingdom unto the Jews. We have to remember that, okay? Rightly divide the word of truth, people. Okay? Verse 30 again. Who shall not receive manifold in this present time, because the king was there, and in the world to come, life everlasting. The millennial kingdom. Eternity. Okay? Okay? Let's continue. Then he, he took unto him the twelve and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles, and shall be mocked, and, spitely, and spitefully entreated, and spitted on. And they shall scourge him, and put him to death. And the third day he shall rise again. And they understood none of these things. 
and this saying was hid from them. Neither knew they the things which were spoken. Right there, by the way, is proof positive that they were not looking forward to the cross in the Old Testament. There are those out there that say like Abraham was looking forward to the cross. <laughs> that Adam was looking forward to the cross. Uh, but no. Verse 34. And they understood none of, the, of these things. And the saying was hid from them. Neither knew they the things which were spoken. Okay. Had to throw that in there. And it came to pass that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging, and he heard the multitude pass by. He asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passed by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Aha! Now, I've expounded on this before. I'm going to do it again, so bear with it, okay? The ruler, here, in verse 18, how did he address our Lord Jesus Christ? A certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus say, said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good save one. That is God. God was saying that to the rich young ruler, right? But the rich young ruler didn't come to the Lord knowing, believing who he was. The king of the Jews, God the Father, God manifest in the flesh right there, offering the kingdom. Okay? And the Lord knew that, of course, and put his finger on that one thing that was keeping him back, and he went away sorrowful. Well, full of himself, trusted in his possession and his possessions. Took for granted, right? And here, someone begging. Look what he says. Okay? Verse 38. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Aha. A Jew referring to our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, as son of David. That's very important. Why is that important? That is attributing unto the Lord Jesus that he is the Messiah. Kingship. To rule as king of the Jews on the throne in Jerusalem. See. For a Jew to address Jesus as the son of David is attributing unto him his kingship as king of the Jews. Hence, the Messiah. See. The ruler didn't do that because he was rich, self-sufficient. What does it say in verse 18? What shall I do to inherit eternal life? What does this blind guy, this beggar say? Verse 38, and he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace. But he cried so much the more. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood. Stopped. And commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight, thy faith hath saved thee. And immediately he received his sight. The Lord opened his eyes, because he came to the Lord, acknowledging him as the son of David, his king, God the Father, the Messiah. Okay, do you get it? You see the comparison? I know you do. Let's continue. And immediately he received his sight and followed him. Glorifying God and all the people when they saw it gave praises unto God. So when this guy who was blind went to Jesus as the son of David, many people rejoiced and praised God and his eyes were opened. This rich ruler, what must I do? Lord's like, I, one thing thou lackest, he goes away sorrowful because he loved his stuff. More than the son of David. God the Father who is right there in front of him. 
You see that? It's no coincidence that it's formulated like that within God's word, the scriptures. Okay? Now, let's remember a very, very simple truth here, shall we? Very simple. John chapter 15, verses 1 on verse 7. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Purgeth it. Cut things away. You know, when you prune a tree, you cut off the things that are dead or dying so that new stuff can sprout out of them. Okay, I used to work as a caretaker in an estate here in Bull Valley. You know, did a lot of tree work myself. You know, you trim and prune and purge the trees. You cut them off and out of that thing comes a new root. See? For every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Uh, maybe you could add into that that uh, the hand went over onto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Let's continue. Now ye are clean through the lowercase w word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. For without me, ye can do nothing. Well, but contraire! There are many people out there calling themselves Christians and are doing all kinds of stuff. Yeah, and they're leading people to hell with their fake, false doctrines. Yeah. Yeah. Who's getting the glory? You do something of yourself, Church of the Living God, you're going out of your own strength, who's going to get the glory? You? Right. Or the Lord. Anything of eternal value, anything, any minuscule thing of reward, of value eternally, comes from the Lord. Okay? Because what does it say there? What does it say there in verse 5? For without me, ye can do nothing. The Lord isn't doing it through you. You're doing it by yourself. And it's going to amount to nothing. Isn't that simple enough? Why do some of us want to go be, uh, beyond that? To puff up ourselves? Makes no sense. Let's continue. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. You play around with that yourself and you figure out what he's referring to. And when he's referring to it. Okay, let's continue. If ye abide in me and my words in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. And remember in First John chapter 5, okay, that, that, instead of just saying that, let's go there. First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. Okay, okay, okay. Da, 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 da. Okay. First John First John chapter 5, verses 
13 on to verse 15. 1 John chapter 5, verses 13 on to verse 15. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know. that ye have eternal life. And that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. And if we know that He hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Verse 14. If we ask anything according to his will, what is his will for us today in this dispensation? Why don't you search the scriptures and find out, dear friend? God wants me to have all this money. Yeah, and how's it, what's that going to do for you? Oh, I'll do this for the Lord, this for the Lord. Uh, okay, but who's doing it? You're the Lord. Hmm? Well, he gave me all this money, right? Or let's say he gave you a big flock. If you're some, why you would be, I don't know. But if you're some hireling in a church building and you have a big flock, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. God is not going to give you something so you can consume it on your lusts, dear friends. It is for His glory that He may be glorified. Do, do, you, do you remember that? Hi! Do you remember that? All right, now go to Romans, chapter 12. Did we finish up in Luke 18? Yes, we did. Romans, chapter 12. Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 3. Okay? <clears throat> Romans chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 3. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say... Through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Not to think so... What does it say there? Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Now I ask you something. Do you think Samson thought a little bit more highly of himself than he ought to have thought? Oh, what about King Uzziah? What about King David? When he took Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah, excuse me, and lay with her, and she was with child. And he brought Uzziah, or um, not, um, uh, what, what, what was his name? Not Uzziah. Um, the Hittite, um, Uriah, excuse me, Uriah the Hittite, excuse me, and he, <laughs> sorry for that, and uh, he brought her husband Uriah the Hittite from the battle, got him drunk, hopefully, hope, uh, hopefully that he would go and lay with his wife and cover up his sin. He killed Uriah, cover up his own sin, and when Nathan came to him about it, King David was all up in arms, and you can read about that in 2 Samuel, okay? Chapter 11, I believe it is, okay? King David, 
for a brief moment thought more highly than of himself than he had ought to think. Sometimes even the Apostle Paul did. That's why he was given a thorn in the flesh. To keep him humble. So he wouldn't be exalted. Especially by himself. For all the revelations that the Lord had given him. Okay? And you have to also remember, brethren, that the things that are highly esteemed among men are an abomination in the sight of the Lord. And how can ye believe those of you who seek honor one from another and not seek the honor that cometh from God only? Hmm? See what I'm saying? Okay. Go to now 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. You're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. You're a steward. You've been given the ministry of reconciliation. In whatever capacity you are in, you're a steward. And moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you. <laughs> or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. For I know nothing by myself. Yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. He that judgeth me is the Lord. Um, how does the Lord judge you today? In this dispensation especially, and in all dispensations. Um, scriptures, examining yourself. Okay? Okay? <clears throat> Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest counsels of the heart. And then shall every man have praise of God. And these things, brethren, ha I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. Well, I know something interesting about the uh, puffed up. You know how many times puffed up appears in the scriptures? Six times. Six times. I kid you not. Look look it up for yourself. Six times. Puffed up appears. And when you look in the context of when uh, puffed up appears, what is it always talking about? Yeah. Let's continue. Okay? Uh, equated with man. Six is the number of a man. The number of man. Let's continue. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? What, you think you got it because you were a good catch to the Lord? Oh! I feel like the Apostle Paul for all the people I have led to the Lord. Yeah, as if the Lord needed you. Hi, as if the Lord needed me. As if the Lord needs you. Ooh, yeah. Let's continue this. <clears throat> Rereading from verse 7. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now, if thou didst receive it, 
Why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? Meaning, I got it by myself. Self-sufficiency. Now ye are full. Now ye are rich. Ye have reigned as kings without us. <laughs> and I would to God ye did reign. That we also might reign with you. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now look at this. Look at this contrast. For I think that God has set forth us the apostles last. As it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle, a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake. Ye are wise in Christ. He's using sarcasm here, people. We are weak. Ye are strong. Ye are honorable. But we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place and labor, working with our own hands, being reviled we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world. While these guys were being applauded. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscuring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. For though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ. Look, look at that verse. For though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Catholics take that and twist that, giving credence to them, calling their Jesuit priest fathers. When our Lord Jesus Christ says, call no man on earth your father. He's not talking about your actual biological father, not to call him father. Of course, call your father, your biological father, your father. Okay, from whose loin, from whose loins you came. Okay, yeah, no, he's talking about a title of religion. Okay, Paul is not talking about that. These people heard the gospel from Paul. Okay. That's what he's talking about. That's what he's talking about. Okay? A spiritual sense. Not the Catholic Jesuit priest with the little stupid dog collar. No, that's not what he's talking about. Okay? Spiritually. Because it says, what, what does it say? Um, uh, in verse 15. For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus... I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore, I beseech you, be ye followers of me. And that's not to get his own little cult, as some like to point out of Paul uh, as he were a false prophet getting people after himself. No, his example, being followers of him. Okay? Not the Pauline cult or whatever. No, no, no. no. He is our example. To the Jew first, and also to the Greek, okay? He is the apostle unto the Gentiles, yes. But what our Lord revealed unto Paul is what all the apostles, Acts chapter 15, consorted unto, and even they preached, okay? You get that? Now remember, not everything was revealed to Paul, but of course not. But for this dispensation, doctrinally, and as pertaining unto our salvation, Okay? Let's continue. For this cause I have sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son, and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Now some are puffed up, as though I would not come to you, but I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, 
but the power. Uh, fair words and smooth speeches. For they uh, promise many things, but they themselves are the servants of corruption. Just because you can give a good oration, just because you can speak something, doesn't mean you have any power of the Lord. No. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. And that doesn't mean you sick, twisted things. That doesn't mean that this, the scriptures don't have power. No. He's talking about people who use fair words and fair speeches to deceive the simple. You know, name it and claim it. Using rhetoric, manipulation, that kind of stuff. Neuro-linguistic programming, that kind of stuff. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod, or in love, and in the spirit of meekness? And let's read in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as not as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, which is named among the Gentiles today now, isn't it? That one should have his father's wife, his stepmother. I do not believe it was his actual mother. Why do I believe that? Because if it was, our Lord would have said so. His father's wife. So this guy was lying with his stepmother. <clears throat> and you are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. They were puffed up. We're not judging you. That, this is when you need us. Come to us with your filth. Yes, come with us that you're living in sin. Yes, come to us amongst the church of the living God. I will hug you and, and give you cookies, milk and cookies, and you can take a look. Look at how spiritual we are. Because we're not judging you. Puffed up. Self-sufficient. Taking for granted. Do you see? Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 again. This time we will be reading verses 1 on to verse 8. Yeah, no, uh, see how we did that? Yeah. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 1 on to verse 8. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity. Charity is self-sacrifice, preferring one above yourself. I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity. I am nothing. Uh, Paul, by the way, is using a little sarcasm here. I hope you can catch that flavor. Okay. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. What good thing must I do to inherit eternal life? And have not charity. Self-sacrifice. Giving yourself on to the Lord. Sacrificing the things of your life. And remember what he said to Peter. Who will not receive uh, manifold in this. At this time. 
but with persecutions. Remember that? Okay? Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. When you are uh, self-sacrificial in things that you do, you're not going to envy. You ought not to envy. See, but when they put love in there, it doesn't envy. Uh, you can love things and be in envy. But charity, self-sacrifice. We ought not to envy. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself is not puffed up because charity is self-sacrifice. And when these these uh, Jesuit trained yea hath God said uh, cemeterians come in and say that it's supposed to be love, no, no, no. It's charity. Self-sacrifice. As so many of you have done on our behalf. And there are no mere words that I could say to give you thanks. That would be sufficient. The Lord recompense unto you your charity, brothers and sisters. Let's continue. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. See, because charity is self-sacrifice. But see, love, which they put in there, can dwell around numero uno, couldn't it? I love this. Remember um, Amon and his sister Tamar? How he loved Tamar, right? But then he lay with her and then he hated her. He loved her, didn't he? But he was, it was all about himself. Don't for one second, by the way, brethren, you have some Jesuit trained cemetarian with their yea have God said that only the originals are nonsense say that it's supposed to be love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. They're lying to you. Let's continue. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. Gotta read it again. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a, a man, I put away childish things. To be as a child, by the way, Give me, give me, give me. I want, I want, I want. Give me, give me, give me. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. Again, charity. Self-sacrifice. You get it? Let's continue. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even also, even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. Go to Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 on verse 10. Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 on verse 10. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, 
considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. What is that temptation he's talking about? To be puffed up, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted to be puffed up. Because you, what does it say? To restore such an one in the spirit of meekness. What does this mean? That you don't be uh, getting to the point where you say, I feel like the Apostle Paul for all the people I've led to the Lord. Or because of this ministry that is of me. To restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. That we are unprofitable servants, and we have done what is our duty to do. Okay? You get it? Let's continue. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Get this through your head. Hi! Get this through your head. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. What is man? He's here today, gone tomorrow. He dances and struts his, his stuff upon the stage and then is heard of no more. It is the tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Just tried to quote Shakespeare, kind of botched it a little bit, but what is man that thou art mindful of him? We're here today, gone tomorrow. Man is like a, a vapor, grass that withereth away. You're going to bow down to some men down here, huh? And hold men who have very good ministries as the final authority? Hmm. Let's continue. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. But let every man prove his own work. Examine yourselves. Is the work that you are doing for our Lord, is it what the Lord has truly called you on to? Okay? And if it is, if it is, let every man prove his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself and not in another. Meaning, I know for certain, Lord, that this is what you have called me to do. And I am confident in you that this is what you have had me to do. But if you have that little nagging suspicion and you go to other people that they may confirm the word unto you, you get what I'm saying? I hope so. Let's continue. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For, now look at this. Okay, look at what we just looked at. Okay? For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Oh, your praises of men will last for a little while until you're dead. Then you'll be forgotten. Oh, maybe they'll keep your name all around like that old that one guy, Billy Sunday, right? Mason. Okay? Okay? But for he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And looking at verse 1, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Okay? Tempted to be puffed up. Of Look at me, look at me. Glorying in your own flesh. See? See, remember? The flesh lusteth against the spirit. Okay? But he that soweth to the spirit 
shall of the Spirit, both capital S's, reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary, weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. One of the things and problems that happens onto babes, and there ain't nothing wrong with being a babe. We all were babes at one time. Um, you want it muy rapido, see? No. We're on the brakes and wait on the Lord for a little while. It will do you well instead of trying to get everything muy rapido, muy rapido. No. No. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Unto one another, brethren, sisters, should they live in God. Okay? Now go back to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verses 4 and verse 16. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being in many are one body in Christ, and every one members of another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministry. Or he that teacheth on teaching. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that sheweth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor extreme hatred. That which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another. Charity, self-sacrifice. Not slothful in business. Consider the ant, thou sluggard. Okay? Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, the blessed hope. The resurrection, catching away. Okay? Patient in tribulation. Continuing instant in prayer. Distributing to the greeds of the saints. <coughs> <clears throat> Distributing to the necessities of the saints. Given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. I already covered this in a two-part video. Uh, previous, okay? Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Be not wise in your own conceits. Don't get so full of yourself that you start thinking of yourself that God's got quite a catch in you. And you lightly esteem the rock of your salvation. Because the Lord gave. The Lord can take away. Just like that. Go to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. 
And we will end it here. Philippians chapter 2. Verses 1 under verse 8. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the capital S Spirit, if any bowels of mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife, or vain glory. Empty glory. Vain glory. The praises of men. But in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. And oh boy. That's a tough one. Isn't it? Isn't it? Especially those of you that have been used of the Lord. And you know that he has used you. Remember Paul's thorn in the flesh? I'm not saying. I'm just saying, of course. <laughs> Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus. who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, God the Father humbled himself, And became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So, God the Father, the soul of the Godhead, was obedient unto the death of the cross. And he came down here to do so. To die, to shed his blood, to cleanse us of our sins. Talk about charity. You talk about some charity. Brethren, at the times we're at right now, we have to be very cautious, especially right now, about ourselves getting puffed up with the things that the Lord has given us. And we need to be meek and have lowliness of mind and not to become familiar as Samson was. Now we are to know the Lord through the scriptures. Absolutely. Absolutely. We are to know the Lord through the scriptures. Yes. But when we start to lightly esteem the Lord, hmm, to take for granted those things, like Samson did, I'll go out as, a, as at other times and I'll free myself from this. But he didn't know that the Lord had departed from him. Okay, Uzziah. He was marvelously helped till he was strong. And then when he was strong, he took it upon himself to do something that wasn't pertaining to him. Self-sufficient. You know, brethren, right now, we need humility in all of our lives of the Church of the Living God. There are those out there who are fake, who can really fake good humility. <clears throat> Can't you? But we have to remember as soon as the Lord has given to you, you mess around, he can even sooner take it away from you. Hmm?
Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. But I will maintain my own ways before him. Meaning, I will continue to uh, walk according to the scriptures by faith and practice. Hmm. This is not the time to get puffed up, brethren. It's not the time to look down upon your brethren. Your brethren. I'm not talking about these infiltrators who shoo themselves for what they truly are. I'm not talking about those. Your actual brethren. Because remember, the Lord has given. Take it away even quicker. We got a woman out there who is being seductive, who are leading people onto the sacrifices of their gods. Who is this woman? Oh, that would have happened to be Roman Catholicism, Mystery Babylon, the Great, the Mother of Harlots and Abominations of the Earth. going to be it for this video. This was one of these videos where the Lord woke me up this morning. It's like, I want you to you know about Samson. It's like, oh, and I started going through that and the Lord's like showing me this. This is like, wow. <laughs> so hopefully this may help some of you. Maybe, hopefully. Um, thank you so much for watching this if you do. And thank you to every single solitary one of you for what you have done for us. Thank you. And may the Lord recompense you in your bosom a thousandfold over. We love you, Church of the Living God. Thank you so much. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.